Let's take a look at Milwaukee's new dual battery 9 gallon wet dry vac. This dude needs two batteries to run, so you can't run it on just one. Although they don't have to be the same battery, runtime is going to be dependent on the smallest or least charged of either battery. Once one battery dies, the unit's going to stop. That's going to tell us this is pretty much a 36 volt unit. This is a nice vacuum, a little bit pricey. If you're just going to get the vacuum, which would be 0920-20, it's going to be $299 currently. If you're going to buy it in a kit, which is going to be 0920-22 HD, you're going to get two 8 amp hour batteries and you're going to get a dual charger. But that's going to cost you $699, so an extra $400 for the two batteries in dual charger. While that sounds like a lot of money, there's a lot that comes with this and this is very versatile, well built and made in the USA with global materials. We're going to go through this guy top to bottom. Stay tuned. When you pull this vacuum out of the box, you'll notice a ton of different parts in pieces. While they're all assembled and they all go together, the kicker of it is most of them can be exchanged. For example, this nine gallon red bin here can be exchanged for the six gallon or 12 gallon. So you could have multiple different ones. You just have to buy a different bin for the bottom. Now on the bottom, there is a rolling caster type situation that holds a lot of things, but you can also exchange that for one with a handle that moves around that's slightly larger. Now with this, this is absolutely amazing because it has some of the best casters that I've seen on a rolling cart in a while. And they also have a locking system so you can lock them into place if you don't want them to roll around. So the kicker is if you're not happy there and you want more things, you can actually go out and buy different power heads. So the single battery power head works with this. You have the dual battery and you can also pick up an AC power head. So you have everything that you could even imagine, but it doesn't end there. Milwaukee also makes new air tip nozzles that will fit not only this vacuum, but any of the other vacuums that you have with multiple common sizes on this. They have different rubber scrubbers for, for carpet. They have brushes. They have all kinds of different nozzles for just about any task that that you would be looking for. The one thing that surprises me on this is that this is not a pack out system that goes on top. This is just something that clips in, you know, and it's very cool with what they have. I mean, their ideas and what they're putting forward is absolutely amazing. You can use these for multiple different things. I think if you have this vacuum or any other one, these are well worth looking into. I like the system that they have for storing this on top. It just simply clips in. But with that said, I'm also surprised with Milwaukee's packout gear that they just didn't design the top of this vacuum to accept a packout box and allow you to put all that in there or put a packout box on top of this. Because the one thing that happens when this bag is on top is you lose your carry handle. One of the first things I wanted to do was get a camera inside this container and see what happens while we pick up some larger debris. And why am I picking up larger debris? It's because the small dust would sit in there and it wouldn't allow us to see anything while the larger debris at least gives us an idea or chance to see something as to what happens on the inside of this vacuum. This debris is from a three inch auger bit and I'll tell you it's pretty large for the one and seven eighths inch hose that we're using but the power of this vacuum seems to pull most of it through although we do have some times we have to stop and unclog the hose. The vacuum worked flawlessly and looking at the inside of this the actual filter that's around this didn't get incredibly dirty. So whatever is happening on the inside of this vacuum, it's working out quite well by keeping the filter extremely clean and allowing you to have good efficiency in suction. I think that's going to be very important since we are running a battery operated vacuum. We have 109 CFM here, so it's quite a bit. They're comparing this to a 4.25 peak horsepower vacuum. With that said, we've gone over horsepower in vacuums before, and there's no way to get a 4.25 horsepower motor on a 15 amp vacuum. Either way, it's, it's one of those peak second things that they run. However that goes, we're not gonna go down that, that path. You'll be pretty impressed with the suction of this vacuum. 
while using this vacuum in a wet condition like we're going to, make sure you put the foam filter on the inside, not the high efficiency filter that comes with it. You're gonna have to probably go out and pick one of those up. We have two fresh eight amp hour batteries in here. We're gonna run this on high and just see how fast we can suck down approximately 10 gallons of water. This is a nine gallon bin, so I don't expect to get through both. And let's see what happens. Something I think is really cool here, we did not have any water come out the exhaust port. That's amazing because there is a stop on the inside. There is some water in the hose, which is going to be normal, right? That's going to drain out. But we also have about three gallons that's left in this bucket. Not bad at all when we take a look at it. Let's take a look at the inside. That's very, very full for this container and pretty amazing. So we have a drain, if we want to use it, on this side. Simply open that up, drain our water out. That drain is able to get almost everything but a quarter inch of water that's left in the bottom out. Not horrible, but that drain could have been placed a little bit lower to allow everything to come out. So if we start out putting this vacuum on low, Seventy decibels. Seventy three decibels on high. Now let's check out the runtime on this guy on both high and low. So through all that vacuuming, I was able to get 24 minutes on high and 40 minutes on low. And those are, are pretty rough numbers. It was actually 23, 40 something, but we're just gonna go through and use that because it's gonna make a little more sense when we look at the eight amp hour battery that's in there. That's getting us three minutes per amp hour on high. So if you had a four amp hour battery on one side and an eight amp hour on the other, that's going to decide your runtime the four amp hour, right? It's a smaller one, both fully charged. You would take the four times three, that's gonna give you 12 minutes of runtime. Doesn't matter if one of your eight amp hours still has any power, it's gonna stop running. That's not horrible, considering you can put 12s in here, you can do anything like that. Plus, if you go down to low, which low is still pretty serious, low's gonna give you 40 minutes of runtime from what I found on this particular vacuum after a full recharge. That's five minutes per amp hour. Not bad, not bad. It's still a battery vacuum and if you are still looking at something that you need to run much, much longer than that, you're obviously gonna have to go corded. There is that option. So while vacuuming, something I really like about this is this quarter turn nozzle. It's stuck in there very well. It's got the two pins, goes in, turns and it's hard to pull out. I could pull on this thing, move it around. I pulled it up against the lift one time. The wheels, the way everything was situated, it just slid right along the lift. I pull it through a door and nothing happened. It just came through the door. The wheels on it worked awesome. I like the fact that we can easily take this off. No issue. On the bottom, we do have rubber feet. So if we just want to use this vacuum and canister without having the wheels, it works that way too. We do lose some storage, but that's not a big deal. It does pop back on here very, very easily and we can be ready to rock and roll. I really like this. I'm not sure I've ever looked at another vacuum that has so many different possibilities and accessories that you could purchase with it or so many ways it could be put together. You really have to buy one vacuum and you can buy a bunch of other accessories. Now that comes to my next point where this vacuum is going to be called very, very expensive by a lot of people out there and $299 for a shop vac is on the very high side of it but it is made in the USA. And there's a lot of us out there that are gonna talk about how we'll pay more to get made in the USA products. 
But once we see a 299 vacuum, we're gonna go, whoa, 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 that's a lot of money. So I guess at this point, if you want made in the USA stuff, you're gonna have to pay for it. And paying for it might mean that it's gonna hurt when you buy this a little bit. $699 for a kit is not horrible considering you're getting the two 8 amp hour batteries. They're not the 212s, but two 8s are still quite good batteries to have around. The dual charger that comes with it is definitely worth the money to have. So I think the kit is an actually pretty good deal, although the thought of spending $700 on a wet dry vac is mind boggling but you do get two batteries. And the warranty that is behind Milwaukee is something that I always appreciate. Their e-service online, and, and that's always been top notch in always treated me and all my friends quite very well. And I assume that it has you also. There's been very, incidents, or very few incidents in the comments where somebody said e-service or Milwaukee denied my warranty unless it was some sort of abuse and I get these tools get abused and sometimes there's issues. Leave comments below, always welcome that, positive or negative. Overall, this vacuum by far exceeded my expectations of performance, of usability, of pulling it around, of the hose being attached, the, the quality of the hose. Everything I expected to maybe have a cut corner here just wasn't there. The only thing that just baffles me is this air tip case is not a packout. I really expected to have a packout system that I could uh, put on the top of this and maybe it just wasn't gonna fit with Milwaukee specs, I, I don't know. But however it goes, the packout on top of this would have just been icing on the cake for this and have been absolutely amazing. Either way, still thrilled with this vacuum. We'll love to have it around. It's great just to tote that hose around, bounce the vacuum off other things and not worry about a cord. Performance of it was great in water, it was great in wood, in different things. It picked up a lot of rocks around here, it picked up a lot of screws, nails, different things. Zero issue with a lot of that. You are limited by the one and seven eighths inch hose that's on this. So if you're gonna pick up larger items, as you've seen before, we might have a few clogs in there. But for most people, that's gonna be just fine. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I cannot wait to hear everything you guys have to say. Give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.